Welcome back to Small Caps, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kerry Stevenson. Today, I'm speaking with Kin Wai Lau. He's the executive chairman of iCandy, not E Y E I Candy. The ASX code is ICI. And iCandy, since I last spoke to Kin uh, last year, they have been on the acquisition trail, setting a very strong foundation. Now, for some of you out there, you'll you'll scratch your head and think. Oh, this is an area of the metaverse and the internet and the video gaming area that I don't understand. But let me just explain what we're going to talk about is why this is going to be a massive revenue stream, not just for eye candy, but we need as investors to understand where the money is flowing to and why. And that's why I've asked Kim to come on board today, talk about these strategic acquisitions and talk about the investment thesis for shareholders and investors going forward. Ken, good to see you. Thanks for joining me on Small Caps today. Hi, Kerry. Good, good to be back. How are and you? It, I'm fantastic. Uh, our hearts go out to those in Australia at the moment who are, you know, there's a lot of flooding out there um, and it's a tough time for some people, uh, but the world keeps turning, things are happening and things are changing rapidly. And you and I spoke just a moment ago off camera about the metaverse and the, I guess, the the changes that are happening with the internet. But for iCandy, both last year and at the start of this year, you've made some strategic acquisitions. If you could just explain to our audience what these were and why you are being pretty busy in with these acquisitions, not just one, there's been a few. Sure. Kerry, we, we made really two very important acquisitions in the last six months. Uh, at the end of last year, we acquired this uh, legendary game studio called Lemon Sky Studios. Yeah. Uh, those um, in our industry will, will know fondly of uh, Lemon Sky Studios. They've been around for 16 years. Uh, they, they made a lot of AAA games for bigger titles and bigger uh, name studios internationally, uh, including some of the biggest uh, game companies around in the world, um, Blizzard Entertainment, uh, Disney, Konami, 2K Games, uh, Microsoft, uh, you name it. Uh, they, we have more than 100 clients and partners uh, that are known internationally as um, our uh, part of uh, our track records and portfolio. Uh, the studio also has made a lot of Triple A games and uh, international success uh, hit games that are well known, uh, including um, Final Fantasy, uh, Command and Conquer, Red Alert, uh, just to name a few. The list goes on. We, we work on more than 200 uh, game titles uh, in that studio. So we have fully acquired the company 100%, and that um, transaction has been completed uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Now, the second acquisition we made uh, was uh, earlier part of this year. We acquired a studio called Storms in Singapore. And Storms uh, was actually strategically owned by three leading Asian telcos. Um, Singtel Group, which owns uh, Optus in Australia, then uh, the largest uh, telecom company in South Korea, SK Telecom, and the largest uh, telco in uh, Thailand, AIS. Uh, strategically, the three telcos owned 100% of Storms and we acquire 51% of that from them and they remain as our partner as the 49% um, uh, shareholders. And of course, uh, Storms is um, headed by well-known industry veterans in gaming coming from places like uh, Google and Microsoft and so on and so forth. Um, our um, strategy for Storm is also uh, building, using the expertise to build more games related to the metaverse and NFT areas that we are in. But as well as we are very attracted to that partnership with three leading uh, international telcos that have footprint across uh, many countries, uh, millions of users within their network that now become uh, part of uh, what we have access to as distribution network. We can distribute our games into those networks. So yep. those, those are the two major acquisitions we have made. Um, before I get, because uh, I want to talk a little bit more about Storms, but before I do, just explain to our audience, if you could, just how big in terms of dollar size this, this uh, sector is, because it's growing. I'd like you just to give, if you like, a big picture overview so people understand as investors, this is a sector that is have, having enormous growth. Sure. Well, so just before the pandemic, 
the video game industry is estimated to be about 100 billion US dollar a year. And that's a size that is bigger than Hollywood uh, and the next biggest uh, movie industry, which is the uh, Bollywood uh, movie industry in India combined and add on that music industry, it will still be smaller than the video games industry. Goodness, and that was, so, so let me just, just confirm this, 100 billion, with a B ladies and gentlemen, billion dollars pre-pandemic. US dollars, pre-pandemic, and as uh, many of us know, the last two and a half years um, pandemic situation, many people are stuck at home uh, most of the time. Some of us uh, don't, uh, are not allowed to go back into the office. Some students are staying at home, learning from uh, desktop. And that also accelerated the uh, video games activities. Because you have more time at home, people are playing more games. I personally estimated that the whole industry has just grown another easily 20 to 30% over the last two and a half years. Every major game company in the world uh, saw some uh, real uptick in uh, gaming activities. What about eye candy? How, what, talk to us about your balance sheet. You recently, you did a $40 million uh, capital raise, so you're well-funded to, to take these acquisitions on. Um, talk to us about your revenue and where you see that going. Because in 2021, a lot of acquisitions mean that the revenue, the bottom line wasn't as strong, but I want to see where it's going going to go going forward in 22. Sure. So we, we did the last uh, race about um, four months ago. Uh, we raised 40 million Australian dollar. And uh, that was a, a placement that was uh, well bid by some of the biggest um, funds in Australia. So it was a full uh, institutional round. And then it was led by, of course, our longtime uh, shareholder, Animoca Brands, which is now one of our biggest investors. Uh, and just, just for info of those who are not familiar, Animoca Brands uh, is one of the biggest names in the uh, blockchain and NFT gaming world uh, globally today. Now, uh, for us, what it means with that race is we are now very well capitalized uh, for the uh, future growth. Uh, with that uh, very strong balance sheet, uh, we, we are well capitalized to move into the next uh, two or three years uh, and even to be very aggressive in M&A with that war chest that we have built. Uh, we focus a lot of uh, our, our corporate resources on to uh, positioning ourselves for the new area, which is the NFT and Metaverse gaming area that we are uh, jumping into. Uh, so we actually uh, diverted a lot of resources last year into the new area. So we saw a lower uh, top line growth for us. And also because of that, there is uh, wider losses. Uh, now that said, we are uh, very comfortable with that because the, the two acquisitions, for example, we have made, um, they have reported very strong revenue uh, in, in excess of $20 million Australian dollar uh, for last year, 2021. We haven't captured that fully because that transaction, uh, those transactions have not been completed, but moving into 2022, uh, those uh, top line revenue, bottom line will be captured onto our book. So we do expect uh, to, to be uh, having a very strong year this year because of uh, some of these acquisitions that we have made. Now, Keen, I have to ask you this. A lot of, uh, and I, I put myself into this category as well, a lot of us out there that are investors are not people that fully understand when you say NFTs and metaverse. We hear about it. We don't fully understand it. But... From an investor point of view, looking at eye candy as a potential area to uh, to look at as growth um, in this sector, why is NFT important? How big is it going to be, and how big is it going to be as part of the eye candy portfolio? You explain it to us in, I guess, in layman's terms, in the older uh, generation terms. <laughs> sure. Well, so I think the. First of all, it's important to understand that um, the internet as we know it is going through a evolution as we speak. Okay. And this, there's this whole concept called the Web 3.0. Uh, basically, we are in the third cycle of the internet. Uh, most of us in the industry would agree on. So this would actually allow a lot of um, the internet services that we, we have access today 
uh, to reinvent herself into self-sufficient and um, transaction-oriented uh, services. Uh, so it's 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 because the the whole topic is complex. It, we don't spend three hours talking about it. We talk about Web three point zero, but in a nutshell, uh, that Web three point zero it's 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 happening today as we speak, uh, and in the right in the middle of that, as this technology called the NFT. Um, NFT allows uh, basically very secure uh, ownership. Think of it like a digital certificate. It's, it's like a digital certificate that is secure, not hackable, and you can keep it digitally. And that represents many opportunities. Uh, so it's, it's almost like having a membership card or a certificate. Now you could um, be uh, proving an ownership to a digital art. For example, that's, that's where NFT popularity started. A lot of um, uh, digital art pieces were sold. Uh, as a NFT uh, that you could now have that ownership transported across the internet um, within minutes, right? So if you think about how traditional art uh, market works, you have to go and buy a painting in Paris and the painting gets shipped to you in a month's time and then you put it up for auction and all those, right? So uh, that's the art market uh, in the physical world. Now in the NFT world, in the digital world, all this could happen within five minutes. Wow. Uh, buying a piece of art um, doesn't matter anywhere in the world. Just that NFT will allow you to claim ownership and everyone agrees that you have ownership over that piece of art and you can resell that piece of art right next uh, five minutes. So it's, it's really a, a game changer for many parts. And in, in game industry, uh, that represents a... Uh, angle where we could now put uh, game assets, digital game assets onto NFTs. Uh, ah, many gamers. That's, that's where I was trying to get the understanding of where does ICANN end it? So <clears throat> all of these video games become assets. So does that's that right. mean that there's like, here's the video game, but we've got an extra income stream, which is the digital asset of the video game? Does that, is that what is? That's right. That's that's what it means for uh, game developer and game publisher. But for gamers, it also represents a very uh, unique ability that it's not uh, available previously. For example, as a gamer, if I play this um, Dungeon and Dragon game, I have this sword that I just obtained, um, and now I could uh, give it to my friend easily because let's say it's an NFT. For example, I can send it across and say, "Hey." Here's a gift. This is a sword I use in this game, and uh, send that across to a friend within minutes, right? And of course, uh, what it also means, I could now take that piece of sword and sell it on a marketplace to other gamers as well. So it, it really represents a very interesting uh, interactive opportunities for gamers, game developers, and the the gaming community, um, the wider gaming community. All right. Well, let's talk. Let's talk numbers now. Let's talk investment opportunity, investment thesis for eye candy. Um, I really want to understand. Um, you've made these acquisitions. Are you going to be making more acquisitions in twenty twenty two, or are you betting down what you've done? Because you've made. You talked about Lemon Sky. That's one hundred percent part of eye candy. Fifty one percent, and I'm assuming that that's strategic because of the telcos in the background. Are you making any more acquisitions or you probably can't talk about that, but what's the, what's the strategy for 2022? So I think for us, there, there are two tracks. There's always going to be two tracks. One is because okay. now that we have all these um, resources, we, by the way, we are now the biggest uh, game company in Australia, New Zealand and Southeast Asia with more than 500 full-time employees and a stellar track record that I just mentioned earlier. Uh, so we will focus um, in terms of organic growth um, to rationalize, to help um, to make one plus, plus one equals to 10 uh, within the studios that we own. Uh, there's a lot of exciting opportunities that we are pursuing uh, as a company. So that, that track of building things uh, better and growing better by ourselves, it's definitely a lot of focus. But on the other hand, uh, because of the DNA of the company, if you look at us, we've been very active 
uh, on strategies on uh, corporate maneuver, we will be always open to look at um, other M and A opportunities, investment opportunities in areas we we are interested in to help to accelerate that growth. So that's those those are two tracks that we operate uh, operate on. Do you so what I what I want to understand is for for people for my audience that's listening at the moment, why do you think that eye candy now is going to be good to, to look at because, you know, the share price has been around about 14, 15 cents for quite some time. Do you think that's because the market was looking at the acquisitions and not seeing the revenue growth? Talk to me about revenue growth and, and the investment side of things. Well, we are very well positioned now for growth uh, because of the couple of uh, strategic acquisition and the fundraising uh, exercise that we have done. Um, I think we, we are partly affected by the global uh, uncertain situations. Um, I think that's part and parcel of uh, being a publicly traded uh, company. Sure. Um, yeah, but that said, again, uh, I think the uh, video games is, is going to be one of those um, industries that will be uh, not that affected uh, in any uh, global situation because uh, that, that demand is, is, is there and it's, it's going to continue to grow because that's just a uh, part of our digital lifestyle now. And um, I equate that to, you know, we, we are more connected uh, to the internet today compared to two years ago. And most of us will use the internet for two things, either for work uh, or entertainment. Uh, so, and of course, uh, entertainment, video games is one of the biggest areas uh, for entertainment. You mentioned uh, Australia, New Zealand and Southeast Asia. Uh, the American market has got to be huge for gaming. Uh, is eye candy in the US market? Are you looking at acquisitions over there? Because is that a big, big market over there? Oh yeah, absolutely. That that's our biggest market. So although we we are we don't operate in well, we, we are not physically operating in North America, but that has always been a traditional uh, market for us. Many of our gamers are from North America and Europe. So that's that's a big, big area for us. Uh, we will continue to market our games to the North American markets. How do you go about marketing it? Is that because you uh, going back to Storms, 51%, so you've got the controlling interest in it, but the telcos have got 49%. Is that really important in the growth and the marketing to have those telcos behind you? And clearly they like what you're doing, otherwise they would have just uh, walked away from, from, uh, from it in its entirety, but they're staying on board. Sure. Well, so there are many ways to market um, to, to the gaming community because it's all digital, it's all on the internet. So we, we could be, you know, for example, we could be taking up um, advertisements on Facebook, uh, for example, to market to the game, gaming community. Uh, via the telcos, we could be strategically um, partnering them to do some um, inbuilt buildings. For example, you could uh, purchase items on uh, the games and then it goes into your phone bills. Those are those are marketing as well, making it easy for people to to have access to uh, to the games and uh, the premium game items that we 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 are selling, for example. All right, uh, I, one final question about twenty twenty two. Give me big picture. You've done the acquisitions. One that's just finalised a couple of weeks ago. Uh, give us what you see is happening for eye candy in twenty twenty two. So investors have an idea of growth and where you're going. I think we are now very well positioned um, as the largest game company with more than 500 employees in Australia, New Zealand, and Southeast Asia. Uh, we have a credit records that are not matched by uh, any of the companies in the region. Uh, we, we will be very aggressively expanding into the new growth area, NFT and Web 3.0 uh, gaming areas. And we are strongly capitalized with a balance sheet that will allow us to do uh, further M&A and investment activities. Uh, so it's going to be a really exciting year for us, uh, 2022. Well, I congratulate you actually, uh, Kin, because uh, we talked last time about Lemon Sky, so well done on that. That's a 100% acquisition. You're very well funded, but we're running out of time. What I want to find out from you is, everyone knows I do this, uh, three reasons. I've got an investor audience out there, and they're looking, saying, first of all, 
not not something that they really understand, but something they need to understand because, as you said, this is a $100 billion industry pre-pandemic. Growth has been about 20%. What are three reasons that people should be sitting up and taking notice of eye candy right now? Absolutely. So, firstly, we have done that uh, two or three strategic acquisitions. So, very well positioned as the biggest game company in Australia, New Zealand, and Southeast Asia to tap into this gaming sector. Number two, we are well capitalized. We just raised $40 billion. That will have a major impact on our ability uh, to grow and also to, to do further MA activities. And thirdly, on a, a macro situation basis, this web point, web 3.0, NFT, metaverse gaming is a macro game changer that will change our industry. So it's definitely something to look forward to. Ladies and gentlemen, you, we're all going to have to get our heads around uh, Web 3.0, Metaverse, NFTs and all this sort of stuff. You know, none of this existed when I was going to school, but it's clearly a growth industry, $100 billion US and growing, and iCandy, largest game company in Southeast Australia, Southeast Asia, Australia and New Zealand, strategic acquisitions, giving them a very strong foundation for growth. Ken Wailaya, thank you so much for joining me today on Small Caps. Come back mid-year and let me know how things are going in those revenue ups, uh, upswings. Thanks, Gary.